Well, one question we ask today is, who am I? What am I as a human being? What's my purpose uh, in this world? You know, who do you think uh, you are? Who do you say you are? How do you define yourself? Uh, what is your identity? Well, some say, well, I believe in science. We're just chemicals and electricity, and we're just atoms and molecules and neurons, and that's the sum of who we are and no more. Uh, and when you're dead, you're dead, and it's all over. The machine has stopped working, the plug has been pulled out. But you might say, well, we go back to an earlier form of life, uh, same form as uh, other species, and we're just advanced primates, just more sophisticated uh, ways of animal behavior. That's who we are. You might say, no, I'm in control of my life. I am master of my own destiny. I am who I am. I make my own decisions. I live my own life. I make my own uh, choices. And maybe you're somebody who has done all of those things and yet somehow life has gone wrong. It's taken a wrong turn. You've made some bad decisions. You've done things that you knew you shouldn't do. And you've ended up saying this about yourself. I'm just a messed up and a broken person that can't be fixed like an egg that's been dropped on the floor uh, and it's all over for me and life has become hopeless. Well, the good news is, is God's word tells us uh, who we are and it starts with excellent news that we're not just a random collection of atoms, uh, we're not just part of the great evolutionary struggle of life, uh, the pain and the death that has no answer, uh, but that God has made us uh, male and female reflected uh, in his image. God created mankind in his own image to reflect the glory of God, uh, to love as God loves, to be kind as God is kind, to have a sense of right and wrong as God does. And yet if that is true, something has gone wrong, hasn't it? Life is not uh, what it should be, as reflected in what we say about ourselves, and more so the lives uh, that we live. The Bible says that whoever we are, uh, whatever we've ended up at, whatever we say about ourselves, uh, we have sinned and fallen short of that very high place that God intended for us to reflect his glory and his uh, goodness. We've fallen short of that, and we know that, don't we? That's the real world uh, that you and I live in. We know what is right, but we cannot do it. We know what is wrong, and we end up doing those things, and we suffer uh, as a result of it. But the good news of the Bible is what God has done to restore that image uh, to himself, to save us uh, from our sin and our waywardness, and the price that we will pay for breaking uh, God's holy laws that he's written uh, on our heart. One of the eyewitnesses of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ starts his account uh, with these words, that no one has ever seen God. We know that is true. But the only God, the Son, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. God the Son became flesh, came here in person, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, to show us the example that God intends for us of a perfect human being, a perfect man, perfect kindness, perfect patience, perfect justice as well and anger and wrath at where God's laws uh, have been broken. But the main reason uh, for Jesus coming, that he should take away sin, uh, to remove the effects of the fall and God's pronouncements of judgment upon us, might be forgiven and be restored uh, to a relationship with God that he desires for us. Another one of the eyewitnesses of Jesus' life uh, says this, that Christ came to take away sin and in him there is no sin. How did Jesus take away sin? Well, he went to the cross, and that's where he bore the penalty for sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. That's the outcome, that's what we deserve for breaking God's laws. The penalty is death itself, an eternal judgment, the condemnation that is rightfully ours before a just judge. And yet God stepped in, in the person of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to pay that penalty upon the cross for all who believe on him, to believe in that saving work for themselves, and to plead the mercies of God, to be forgiven and to be restored again. He came to take away sin, in him uh, there is no sin. Another one of the eyewitnesses of Jesus' uh, resurrection from the dead, when he'd experienced himself that transformation from being an arrogant, angry lawbreaker, shaking his fist against God. A man called Saul uh, later on said this, that anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone. All things have become new. 
freed from the sins that will condemn us, free from a broken life, but more so free to know and love the living God, not just for today, for eternity. I'd encourage you to read uh, the Bible, read the Gospels, read the accounts of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then turn from your sins and put your faith and your trust in all that he is. God who became flesh to live for you, to die for you, and to rise from the dead, to give you a living hope and make you a new person in him. Thank you.